Hello, Penguin Orts! So I'm the Billy Penguin, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance! Today, we are launching yet another space station. This time, we're going to build a new one called Talos 2, I know, very imaginative, around Nemesis, because we have a contract to build a space station, and also we need a sort of spaceport uh, halfway point between Solitude and also Hyperion on the surface of Nemesis, so it's going to be quite useful. It's just essentially a little more than a place to store kerbals and a bit of fuel. It's not going to be another research station because we have more than enough science labs working our way through all of the uh, glorious data from the surfaces of our two moons. And as such, this is actually unmanned right now. We're just sending it out there because we've got quite a few contracts to do today. You see, we've got about 200 days until our demise window opens up. And I would really like to send a manned mission to demise. But... In order to do that, we're going to need to develop some technology and, most importantly, get a lot more money. You see, we've got lots and lots of science. Okay, science doesn't seem to be too much of a problem right now with all of our science labs and such. Obviously, we're very slowly making our way through some of the later techs, but we're doing absolutely fine. Problem is, we don't have the money to buy the parts that we're researching. So, this episode is essentially just a lot of completing contracts and just trying to accumulate a lot of money um, to try and deal with things. As you see, using our reusable um, launch vehicles to their utmost, landing those two boosters, and then landing the main central stage. And this stage itself is designed not just for this contract, but also to support the mission afterwards, because we have a lot of rescue contracts, and more importantly, two salvage contracts for the surface of Nemesis, and that's going to require a lot of fuel and a bit of support. So that's why we're launching this station first, and then we're going to launch the second mission to go dock with this, get refueled, and then do all of those wonderful different contracts like so. So what we have to do is send our insertion burn, out to Nemesis. We've got much, much better probes now uh, since researching more advanced uh, electronics. Certainly more advanced probes than the ones we used on Tribute 1 and Legacy 1, those two probes that are still spinning <laughs> around Demise and the Wasteland, thanks to the mob persistent rotation. There's no way of stopping them spinning. They have no reaction wheels. So yeah, when we send more space probes in the future, I think we're going to want to um, <laughs> use some slightly better probes. Or, you know, just put some reaction wheels on our goddamn space probes for once. Still, I, I still consider those missions pretty successful. They still did everything uh, that I wanted them to do. Everything short of landing on Malice, the moon of the Wasteland, which would have been cool. But anyway, as you see, we're just adjusting our inclination so that we get into a nice equatorial orbit of Nemesis, which is different to Talos 1. Talos 1 orbits in a polar orbit of Guardian just because it was easier to get it into that and it can go over every biome on the surface. But uh, we want this to be more easily uh, reachable from Hyperion and make it easier to get to Hyperion, which is on the actual equatorial plane of Nemesis. So that's why we're going to put it on the equator as well. We're also going to use it for doing lots of rescue missions and the like. Um, and I'm pretty sure... Stranded Kerbals are never put in a polar orbit. I've only ever seen them in equatorial orbits. Um, so it would be kind of silly to put this into a polar orbit. It's just so expensive. Inclination changes all the time. Unfortunately, we do actually run out of fuel just shy of getting into orbit. Um, because, of course, we have to do a very expensive inclination change. So what I decided to do is enable crossfeed through that decoupler. And we're going to use a little bit of the fuel that we were actually intending to store. But that's not part of the contract. That fuel's just there because... It's useful to have fuel on a space station, you know, you can never have too much fuel lying around. So we are using a little bit of that fuel, but we still have plenty left. Um, and it's going to be quite useful in future for resupplying further missions to Nemesis and building our infrastructure in and around the Solitude system. And there we are, we've got ourselves into a nice stable orbit, so we just have to spin the spacecraft around and then eject that transfer stage into the surface of Nemesis, like always. Trying to reduce the amount of space debris we're leaving around it is very dangerous to leave just a, a stage in orbit, especially on the same orbit as a space station, because chances are it's going to come back and hit you. Anyway, here is the mission we're launching to Nemesis. I've named it Hephaestus 1, god of craftsmanship and a few other things that I can't quite remember. But anyway, this rocket looks a bit funky, I know, and that's because this is actually going on a deep space salvage mission. We've got two craft that we need to grab off of the surface of Nemesis and bring all the way back to Solitude. And that's why we've got that massive 10 meter um, inflatable heat shield on the front, because we're going to have to protect not only our spacecraft, but also two 
other spacecraft we're going to have attached to the sides of the rocket. So we're actually going to go into the atmosphere head first using that 10 meter heat shield to protect us. You probably notice we're going on a bit of a crazy ascent trajectory and that's because this rocket is very powerful. Um, this is the rocket we used to launch Hyperion and it's a little too powerful for this reason uh, or for this purpose. But the previous one, the uh, Griffin launch vehicle we used to launch Talos 2, um, yeah, that isn't quite powerful enough. So I just decided to use this to save time. And as such, we can do a pretty insane rendezvous maneuver with a Kerbal who's stranded in low solitude orbit. We're rescuing a lot of Kerbals today. As you see, we just rescued this first one from orbit of solitude. We've got another one to rescue from orbit of Nemesis. And then we have two plus their craft to rescue from the surface of Nemesis as well. So... Yeah, uh, we're doing a lot of contracts in one mission here, and that's just as well, because this spacecraft was bloody expensive. Uh, although we did manage to recoup some of the costs with this massive reusable first stage, which I guess is a single stage to orbit, because we didn't have any side boosters. I originally did have side boosters, and I realised, no, it's just too powerful. Um, I just couldn't do the gravity turn fast enough, and um, we had an apoapsis up at like 500,000 metres, and it was just silly. Anyway, we'll leave a little bit of fuel in that uh, first stage so that we can bring it back down into the atmosphere, but first of all, we're going to get our encounter and do our injection burn to get us out to Nemesis. But now we have our three Kerbals on board. You probably see on the sides we actually have um, two external command seats because I wanted to save weight and we have a lot of Kerbals to pile on board today and the, the, the command modules that store multiple Kerbals, they're so heavy. Uh, so we're just going to stick them in the external command seats. I mean there's no reason why not? They're going to be protected by the 10 meter heat shield, so we might as well save on weight. So the only uh, pressurized capsule is actually that command module, which of course we have Katrina in, who is uh, just the ace pilot, and I think we need her on this mission. We also have an engineer, because we're going to need to do a little bit of Kerbal Attachment Systems shenanigans, but we'll see more of that when we get down to the surface. Now, I just don't want to talk about some stuff first. I mean, first of all, the Kerbal Space Program Making History expansion came out. And I just haven't covered that on my channel um, at all because I've been so unbelievably busy. I mean, I'm actually making this video now when I should probably be revising, but it's just because I had a terrible night's sleep tonight. I'm incapable of focusing, so I thought I might as well just take a break and record this YouTube video like I am now. But yeah, I'd like making history. That's something I should have been like hyped for and looking forward to, and then I just realised it had come out about a week after. And since I got Kerbal Space Program back in late 2012, uh, I actually got the expansion for free, which is very nice. But as you see, we're actually rescuing our first Kerbal there, and now it is time to bring that first stage back down to the surface of Solitude. And uh, yeah, this is going to take a bit of time, because it's in quite an eccentric orbit, so we're going to take it through the atmosphere a few times to try and slow it down. If we tried to go straight down to the surface, we would destroy it from atmospheric heating so as you see we have to take things very carefully those air brakes are just completely useless <laughs> look at them uh, but we need to spare we need to, well use our fuel pretty damn sparingly we don't have a huge amount just enough for uh, the final descent so we're just very carefully heading through the upper atmosphere not going any lower than 40 kilometers which is just about the limit of uh, the amount of heating that our engines can take because those vector engines they're really, really expensive. They're very good engines, but yeah, they're... Yeah, you don't want to be putting those on expendable rockets. So once we've gone through the atmosphere the first time, we just need to orbit back around. As you see, we're still in quite an eccentric orbit, and we're going to go through another time. In the end, we had to do this um, three times in total, with the third time actually being the final descent. Once again, adjusting our periapsis to make sure it's about 40 kilometers, and this time we know it's going to survive, uh, so I just put it up to four times time accelerate physics warp and we just went straight through the atmosphere same as before just shedding a little bit of velocity to try and make that final approach a little bit easier and hopefully a little bit cooler so we can save this great big rocket we do actually have enough parachutes that we don't need too much fuel uh, just to slow it down so we're only going to need to save maybe like 50 units of fuel just for that final descent to make sure that we have a nice soft landing in the ocean we actually fly over the uh, space center here but we're not going to land that close to it because well that's just a product of where our periapsis was and we didn't have enough fuel to really adjust it so we are going to land a little ways away from the space center and get about 70 percent of the cost back but still that 70% is well over a hundred thousand funds and considering how broke we are at the moment uh, yeah that <laughs> certainly uh, makes a big difference as you see we're pushing the very limit of how much heating those engines can take but we are beginning to slow down and we just fire our engines up a little bit just to try and keep that heating to a minimum 
and we're through the worst of it. Heading now down into the thicker parts of the atmosphere and setting up all of our drogue shoots to make sure that they open at the correct altitude and slow us down before we, you know, smash into the ocean. I've put drogue shoots on it now just because I realised that you need to slow yourselves down slightly more in the upper atmosphere, especially with these big first stages. Um, to have any hope of the next lot of parachutes actually opening in time to slow you down. But there we go, our first, well, fully successful reuse of uh, this launch system. Last time we lost a couple of engines and just about managed to reuse about half of them. And there we go, a nice gentle touchdown into the ocean. Now, before we head down to the surface of Nemesis to go do our deep space salvaging, we're actually going to rendezvous with Talos 2. Now, the original intention was to refuel Hephaestus. But, we have loads of fuel left in this transfer stage, and since we used a bit of the fuel that was meant to be stored on Talos 2, we're actually going to top up Talos 2's fuel tank with our fuel tank. So, Talos 2 isn't fueling us up, we're fueling up Talos 2, which is kind of funny, I'm not going to lie. Now, the problem is, our docking ports are actually covered by those two external fuel tanks. So what we're going to have to do is get out and use Kerbal Attachment System and get some pipe endpoints and connect up the two spacecraft, well the spacecraft and the station, and then refuel it like that. So we got our Kerbal out here, give them a screwdriver and get them flying over, just attach a pipe endpoint to the station and then attach another one to Hephaestus and then we link them up. However, for some reason, when I then try and transfer the fuel, the fuel won't transfer. I have no idea why. So I get out and think, okay, maybe it's because I attached it to, you know, the SAS module. Um, I can't actually find a way to deattach it, so I have to just destroy the part. Uh, but then I head back to the fuel tank. So we're directly connecting the fuel tanks now. There we go. Connect that to the space station. Okay, surely that'll be able to work, right? No, wrong. It, it just won't transfer. I have no idea why. I don't know if this is a glitch or not. I tried quick saving and reloading. It uh, wouldn't do anything. I went over, pressed pump here. Nope, nothing's happening. No matter how many, whatever I tried, it just wouldn't work. Uh, so in the end, I actually decided just to resort to save file editing. I edited the fuel out of Hephaestus and into Delos 2 because that's just stupid. Um, we should have been able to transfer there. I'm not entirely sure why we weren't. Uh, but there we go. We just unlinked the spacecraft and we get ourselves back into that external command seat. And now we can head down to the surface and start rescuing some Kerbals and salvaging some spacecraft. We have to make sure you're actually controlling it from the command pod though, because by default it <laughs> commands it from those external command seats, which uh, isn't particularly useful. Now this first one's relatively close to the equatorial plane. It's actually um, pretty much on the same longitude as Hyperion, which is quite nice. Uh, although, well, not quite, but he is on some nice flat ground, which is going to make our job a hell of a lot easier. I don't know what I would have done if they'd spawn on top of, like, one of Nemesis's horrendous mountains. Uh, we would have really had some problems then. But uh, thankfully, we just do a small inclination change, and then we can use most of the fuel left in our transfer stage to slow ourselves down. We don't do a particularly efficient descent here. As I said, we've got to use up this transfer stage before we hit the ground, so, you know, we might as well just do things methodically, and we need to land pretty damn close, because we need to attach that spacecraft to one of the claws on the side of our spacecraft. And you might be wondering, Beardy, how, how are you going to do that? Are you going to flip the spacecraft on its side? Well, this is where Kerbal Attachment System really comes in handy. Now, I've never really used Kerbal Attachment System a massive amount in the past. You see, we're just attaching that uh, transfer stage with a little bit of fuel left in it, but we needed to detach it before we went in for our final landing. It does crash a little close for comfort to the uh, spacecraft, but it's all right. But anyway, we're going to use one of the winches from Kerbal Attachment System. And as you see, we get that Kerbal out and into one of our external command seats. And then what we do is we get our engineer out and we're going to grab uh, one of those pipe endpoints again. Well, we have to get our screwdriver first. But then we're going to attach that to the top of that command module. Thankfully, it's not too massive a pod. And then what we do is we grab the winch and we connect that up to the command pod. So all we have to do is step back and then retract the winch. When we first, we actually retract our solar panels just in case it uh, jumps up and hits them. But we just very, very carefully retract the winch. And as you see, yeah, that's why I retracted the solar panels. It does like to jump around a bit. We have to be very careful here. It does actually slightly miss the claw. So I, I try and nudge it into the claw um, and have to sort of wiggle around a little bit and do all sorts of shenanigans. But we just sort of extend it a little bit and then mess around with it and sure enough we've captured it and we've completed our first bit of deep space salvage so in the next episode we will be continuing to the next site salvaging the next piece of wonderful command pod and heading back to solitude thank you very much for watching everyone i do hope you enjoyed and i will see you all next time